it would be uh, interesting to, to lecture on the bees and the bugs, possibly, <laughs> or on how beautiful the trees are. But when you begin lecturing on the powers that be, it's another world. Because in that world you have opposition. And in, in that world you have even contradiction. And so therefore, uh, you're dealing with a, with a subject of vital importance, I believe, to the human race. And for sure, to the destiny of our country, and more particularly, to the strength of the church, the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. So therefore, we are, we are delighted uh, to, to lecture relative to principalities and powers, and believe that God will enrich us, and that God will strengthen us, and that God will use each one of you to destroy the works of the devil. If we can ever get it across to you that you are as important as anybody living, say, I am important. I am important. God, made me so. God made me so. If we can get that into us, to where you won't say, well, there's a problem, run and get the pastor. You see, that, that's just like a, a soldier in the army saying, yeah, here's an enemy, uh, everybody stand still and let me run and get the sergeant, you see. You know, you don't do it. You, you start working on him yourself. You, you're the one that met him, and you're the ones that handled the problem. If we could get the total body of Christ handling the problems of the church and of the world, we could win this world to the Lord Jesus Christ. But we're going to have to stop passing the book spiritually uh, and, and saying, now, wait a minute here. I can deal with any problem there is in the world because Jesus said so. And if Jesus says so, I, I can believe it. Can you say Amen. In this lesson, uh, we are dealing with who's afraid of the big bad wolf. And this is lesson two in, under, that, uh, under that title. May I bless you. Now, Lord, we thank you for these that are seeking. They are aggressively seeking. These are not those that are standing inside of some encasement or inside of some wall and singing, hold the fort. But they are those on the battlefield, open battlefield. In fact, the aggressive battlefield. They're not playing a defensive game. They're out there where the problems are. And they're willing, in God's name, to tackle those problems. So I ask you to open up our spirit beings right now and anoint us to be mighty deliverers of God as the men of old were. And we ask you to bless our minds that we may take in the truth and that we might absorb it in our spirits and use it in every decision we make. And all the people said, Amen. in this lesson, uh, we have discovered several very exciting things. And one is in pulling the curtains back and observing who the enemy is that we are, that we are fighting. And in, in doing this, uh, we have discovered that there is one who is provocative. He is out there looking for trouble and, and that we happen to be his target. Now, his real target would be God, but he can't get to him. And so he has to take the next target, which is God's people, and see what he can do to hurt or to discourage or to make afraid that they might run away and that he might destroy them. He is a provocative enemy. He is just not sitting and waiting for you to start a problem with him. He creates a problem and brings it to you. And so we must understand that and be aggressive against him. He is also what we call a predator. He is a devourer. Uh, he is not playing games. Now you better believe me. He is not playing games. The devil is not playing games. He wants your soul. He wants to sh not stop anywhere short of your soul. Uh, he, the Bible says, is a destroyer of nations. He wishes to see this nation in ashes. And so we've got to know that he is a predator. He is a killer. And that we are not in any kind of a situation of game playing. In our lesson, we are studying about this person who is the devil and Satan, who was an angel and became a fallen angel and that he is the director of the principalities and the powers of the netherworld of which you and I are the enemies of and the warriors against. And that it is time that in the world that we live in today that the church, uh, which we consider the body of Christ, uh, which we consider the only 
a force on the face of this earth capable of spiritual warfare. Philosophy is not capable. Psychology is not capable. Only the church of Jesus Christ is, is capable uh, to, to have an, an affront that we might fight and destroy the powers of the devil. When we know that, God is depending on you and me. Uh, we are his only battle men. We are his only infantry to, out there to do the job for him. Now, how can the church uh, teach the world to be unafraid? Our world is afraid. The only way in which this body that we believe in to be the church of the Lord Jesus Christ can go to the world and say, listen, there is an enemy out there. You have the power to defeat him. How can they do this? Number one, the church must know its own arsenal. There is a power. And that power is in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we must teach the world the force, the power, the strength, the, the dynamics of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. I have noticed in whatever country I might be in, if I begin to set someone free from demonic power, whatever, whatever uh, aberration it might be in that area, invariably, without my even thinking about it, I begin to say, the, the blood of Jesus, the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then I have a little chorus, oh, the blood of Jesus. Now I begin to sing. And my victory actually comes not so much through the words that I utter as through my resisting through the power and the authority of the blood of Jesus. Very little teaching is done on that today. And it would be very limited, the number of people that would believe that you can say, I take the blood of Jesus and I use it like a hammer and it destroys the powers of the devil. Or I use it like an instrument of war and I come against you and I shoot my arrows. They're all the blood of Jesus. You see, not many denominations could stand up under that. And they, they, they say, wait a minute now, maybe, maybe his blood will cover me. But is it, is it a source of power against the devil? It is the only power against the devil. The life of the flesh is in the blood. It was the giving of his life on Calvary. And so when we say, oh, the blood of Jesus, we're saying, oh, the life of Jesus Christ against you. <laughs> oh, there's strength there. There's victory there. And you got to know that. And you, you got to say, here's our arsenal. Our arsenal is not arguments. It is not philosophy. It is not doctrines. Our arsenal is the blood of Jesus. Now, I have never set anyone free in the world uh, of a force and a power of evil without the blood of Jesus. I, I've, I've never done it. And I have not tried to say, let me see, point number one and point. No, I've never gone by points. That thing has flown out of my spirit. I, out of my spirit comes the answer that it's the blood of Jesus Christ that conquers and knocks to pieces. This we must teach the world. Now, until the world knows that, they will never be able to be free. I get the most pitiful letters of any human being, I guess. Now, this very day, I, I, I read a, an eight-page letter, I guess, or ten. And the man said, I am sitting here dressed in women's clothing. He says, I have just mistreated my body in self-abuse. I have a beautiful wife and I have a lovely daughter. And this spirit drives me into this. He says, I have to lock the door and dress up like a woman all over and abuse myself. And says, I want to quit. And, and he says, as far as I know, even my wife doesn't know this. But says, I am tormented. I am so tormented. I want to die. I'm so tormented. He said, I've had no one that can help me. And my, my secretary can tell you, I wrote back a letter to Pennsylvania, and I said, sir, get over here. Let me, let me, let me have a work with you. Because when I lay hands on him, that spirit will come out of him. And he'll be free. Now, now we have a world today where there are millions of people that are hurt and, and millions of people that, are, that need help. We are not talking into the air. Maybe we are too late. Yeah. Maybe we are not, maybe we should have done this several years ago. I'm sure that there should be five times as many students here. We should be rocked from wall to wall of many men saying, I want to be a mighty deliverer of mankind. You can't do it in ignorance. And you sure can't do it if you don't know you can do it. You see, 
I tell you, no, you can, you can't. And that no, you can is called faith. And until you've got that thing in your heart, you can't set anybody free. So we must tell this world that we live in, the church must, that we have an arsenal of strength and power. Not only is it the blood of Jesus, it's the force and the power of the Great Commission. When our Supreme Court passes a law and puts it into the books, it's law. The Lord Jesus Christ, the supreme one of all times, said unto his disciples, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. It was a command from the commander-in-chief. He says, they that believe in her and are baptized shall be saved. They shall be. <laughs> How many are like that? That's positive enough. They that believe not shall be damned. Hey, that's very positive too, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, there's no in-between there. There's just two shells, and you're on one side or the other. Then he says, and they that have faith shall cast out devils. Who? <laughs> well, the master said it. And then they're not a historian. And not even a preacher of any kind. The master said it. They were the last words he ever spoke on the face of this earth. He never said anything after that. He concluded when he said that it was all finished, he went right on up to heaven to be seated by the right hand of the Father on high. Well, we use that power. And when we come against the enemy, we say we come to you with the powers and the force and the authority of the great commission of Jesus Christ spoken to the church. It belongs to the church. It is the church. You come out. Whew. You better believe it works. You don't come in your name. You don't come in your authority. You don't come in your, the authority of your church. You don't say, my church sent me. The devil say, so what? You know? Yeah. 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 But you come in the authority of the Son of God, the mighty one, the glorious one, the one that has all power in heaven and earth, the one that has the keys of, of hell and death. Who? And you say, he said, I could. then it's already done. The devil just quit and leave. You know, they know when to quit and leave. And so they said, they just back off and say, I can't take this. So when we reveal to the world the arsenal that we're surrounded with here and the force and the power that we come uh, against them with. And of course, we could say with Romans uh, that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God, the word of God stored in our hearts. And of course, that is the word of God I was giving you there. Uh, and, and so there is our source of strength. Number two, the church must fully know and recognize its enemy. Uh, it is so easy for us to be uh, fighting one another and fighting denominations. Uh, when on the, 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 the television throughout the world, I see one gospel minister make slight remarks about another one. I say, listen, <laughs> the devil's working so hard. Uh, can't you just leave God's people alone and keep fighting the devil? Uh, maybe he is wrong, but you may be wronger. That's not an English word, but it's a good one anyway, you know. It might be a little German mixed into that. Uh, but uh, uh, you just may not be as right as you think you are yourself. We're all blinded somewhere or another with our, you know, uh, by our blinkers might be our denomination that we've been brought up in. But we, we don't want to just, you know, say we're the only ones right. I don't want to say that. I'm willing to learn, and I do learn every day. But we want the world to know uh, that, our, that our enemy is not one another. Our enemy is not a denomination. Our enemy is not even a doctrine. We're not going to just stand up and beat you over the head for your doctrine. We want to know our enemy. And our enemy is the devil. And all of the demons that work along with him. Then, number three, the church must recognize this enemy and his works. See what he's doing. All the divorces in America today, they're the devil's works. There's nothing I've seen in my own office. A man, as handsome as a man could be, and a lady standing there with him, as beautiful as a doll. And they came in there to say, listen, we can't stand each other anymore. And I grinned a little bit, and I said, we well, used to hug up pretty tight. And they said, yeah. Well, I said, well, what happened? And he's got one side of the thing, she's got the other. I said, you both missed it. I said, she's as pretty as a doll. I said, anybody could love her. I could too. <laughs> That'll set him on his toes, you know. And I said, look at that man. He could be an athlete. He could be an idol for the little teenage girls just to love. And I said, listen, there's nothing wrong with you two. 
There's a big bad devil out there hurting both of you, lying to both of you, making you raise your voice when you ought to keep it low and making you see faults uh, that you've got just as bad and you ought to forgive one another and love one another and get out here right now and let me lay hands on you. Well, you take care of problems pretty quick that way. If you could only see the works of the devil in this country, you know, to see what the devil... Most, most people, they don't know what the devil's doing. They see problems in the land. They don't know who to blame it on. So they blame it on the Democrats. <laughs> and the rest of them blame it on the Republicans. It's neither one. It's, neither, it's the devil that wants to destroy America at this time. And the best way to destroy it is to, to destroy the homes. God hold our homes together. Help us to love one another. In, like the Bible teaches us. Can you say amen? So until we can teach the world to recognize the true enemy and what he's doing to us, well, we just can't get very far. Now, the next point, the church must be willing to face that enemy. Now, there's your big problem right there. <laughs> you, can, you, you can ask the average church, uh, would you help me uh, this coming Saturday? I want to hand out 2,000 tracts down to Ma. I'm busy. What are you busy doing? Sitting by the fire. Watching television. I'm, I'm just so busy, I can't get out of that easy chair. You know? Well, they're not in the, the Lord's army. They may be in something, but they're not in the Lord's army, you see. Until we can find people that are willing to face the enemy and do battle with him. I want you to know right now, there are not many preachers that want to do it. We have ministers that will send their own congregation five or 600 miles to get somebody else to pray for somebody. Isn't that something? Send their own people in their own congregation, five or six hundred miles to get somebody else to do their work. I'm not sending anybody anywhere. I'm no referral station. <laughs> I got better things to do than to refer people to something else. Yeah, you, you come to me with a problem and I hit it as hard as I can right then. I don't care what it is and how big it is. And that's what God wants every, every one of us. He doesn't want any of you to be a referral station and say, well, go see him, go see him. No, they come to see you. God brought them there. Take care of it. You say, what if I fail? Well, you've already missed it. When you've got doubt in your heart, you can't do it. You got to know you can do it. You got to know you're God's servant. You got to know that you and God are on the same side and you got to know the devil's already defeated. All you've got is to pronounce his defeat. Aren't you glad you don't have to lick him? The Bible says all you have to do is resist him. You say, go. Say, go. You see how easy it is? Yeah, you just do it. You just do it. That's all. The church must know that Jesus Christ prevails in his church and gives his church power to defeat and to destroy the enemy. The Lord Jesus said in Matthew 16 and 18, Upon this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against my church. Now, the gates of hell is the strongest thing the devil's got. His gates are his ornamented parts. His gates is his intellectual part because in the ancient days they met in the gates of the city to carry on the, the business of the city and the politics of the city. It, it, was a, it, was a, it was the greatest part of the whole city. The gate was. And it was a place that they made so beautiful and so strong. They put iron and metal all over it in order to preserve their city through their gates. And, and, and the greatest thing the devil has can't stand before you and Jesus was the one who said so. He said, if you will accept me as the Son of God, even the gates of hell can't prevail against you. Now, what I want to say more about that is this. Hey, gates don't go anywhere. How many already knew that? Yeah, gates don't run around the country. They stay in the wall. You say, what do you mean there? I mean, we're going after the devil right to his vitals. Yeah. We don't just get off somewhere and throw a stone at him and duck. <laughs> we go right after his vitals. We hit his gates. When you knock his gates out, the city is gone and the prisoners run free and God wants us to hit him where it hurts. If you believe it, say amen. amen. The Lord Jesus said, the thief cometh. He cometh not but for to steal, to kill and destroy. That's in John 10 and 10. But the church possesses the full capacity of God's power to totally destroy the thief. It doesn't matter if he has come to steal from you or to kill or to destroy. You have the full capacity of delivering the, delivering the person that's been hurt by the bondage of the devil. When that thief comes to steal, what does he want to steal? Number one, he wants to steal your relationship with God. That's the first thing he steals. 
The first thing the thief steals is your relationship with God. And that's what you have to reestablish when you want to help a person, a relationship with God. John 8, 36 says, If the Son therefore sets you free, you should be free indeed. That's a relationship. You get him back to a relationship with God, and you can set him free. He's come to steal our testimony. He is a thief. He's come to steal our testimony. The devil doesn't want you witnessing of how powerful the blood of Jesus is. How great it was when he broke all kinds of mess in your life and set you free. Brought you out of drugs. Brought you out of alcohol. Uh, brought you out of nicotine. Brought you out of adulteries. Brought you up out of the miry, miry clay and set your feet on a solid rock. Hey, he don't like that. And he, he would like in some way to steal our testimony. Bless God, he can't have it. Our testimonies are real. Our testimonies are vital, and it's through testimonies that we save the world. We're known by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. So we got the blood and we got the testimony, and we're winners. We're winners all the way. If you know it, say amen. They want to steal your spiritual strength. They want to keep you from being healed. The devil does. They want to keep you from joy. There's so many Christians today that are devoid of continuing joy. They permit circumstances to come into their lives, and those circumstances robs them of their joy. The devil is a robber. He is a thief. He will take your joy away. The kingdom of God is joy, Romans 14, 17. The kingdom of God is joy, and you've got to live in joy. You can't set people free if you're a long-faced individual. Everybody hear me? Yeah. If, you, if you've got a sour situation inside your life, you cannot set anybody free from the devil's power. One of the best things you can do is laugh at the devil and he loses face right away. He has nothing to laugh about. And uh, lastly here, he can steal your prosperity. You know, the devil wants to impoverish you. And, and I, I, I say that every one of us should say, say devil, take your hand off my pocketbook. Yeah. Take your hand off my pocketbook. And, and I'd say every day, God, you have more ways to bless me than just a salary. You have more ways to bless me than just my business that I'm in. You have many ways to bless me. And, and say, now listen, Lord, you can prosper me in a thousand ways. I don't want my Aunt Sarah to die, but if she does, I'll just take all that money. <laughs> She's been hoarding it anyway. Well, anyway. <laughs> Excuse me. Hope you don't have an Aunt Sarah. He would like to take the possessions of God's people away from them. And we're not giving them up. We need all the riches of this world to win souls with. Can you say amen? amen? You can't imagine the offers. I was made an offer today of a TV station back east for four and a half million dollars. Today, I mean not some other time, uh, this afternoon. I was made an offer of a TV station for four and a half million dollars uh, uh, back east. And it continually happens. There are opportunities out there and God's people need to be free to do the work of God and to save millions of souls before Jesus comes. If you know it, say amen. amen. Where is the true refuge of the Christian? The true rest refuge of the Christian, unless a Christian remains, number one, obedient to the will of God. You can't just keep resisting God and set people free. That's not possible. If you're going to set people free, you're going to have to know what it means to walk in God, to walk in love, to walk in blessing, to walk in obedience. By staying in the Word of God, the devil could trap you if you don't. It would be like a fly being caught in a spider's web. You have to stay out of his web, and, and God will help you to do it. There's perfect safety for all Christians. You've got to know that. There is perfect safety for all Christians. And when we know that and we got that, we can say, say, Lord, we don't have to in any way say, am I, am I safe in doing this? I'd like to tell you something. Uh, there was a time when, when people said, uh, you can be in a meeting like this, and if someone casts out a devil, it might jump into someone else. Uh, I, I, I don't like to mention a preacher's name, but that's one of the biggest lies ever told. Uh, number one is this. If I didn't feel I could control a thing before I brought it out, I'd just leave him where he was. Yeah, why should an innocent person be hurt on the other side? And then if you, and if you are an adult, for sure, I, you have to permit him to come in and order him to come in at all. And so the, the whole thing isn't true. And I say that if you have power to bring him out, you have power to place him where he ought to go. You see? And, and that there is no danger. And, well, look at Jesus. He, he cast out devils before everybody. And he says he would cast out many devils in one day. And you never heard of anybody ever getting hurt. 
I heard one, one evangelist say, if you don't bow your head, this thing will jump on you. And I deliberately stood up. I knew it was a lie, and I just deliberately stood up and looked all around. Because I, I, was, I just wasn't going to let anything like that ever. I don't want the devil's fears in my heart. No. I, and I, the way to rebuke the devil is just to stand up against him. And so I said, no, I don't accept that. I don't accept that at all. Uh, when you pray for a person to be healed, you can get them healed by the blood of Jesus Christ and the power of the gospel of Jesus. If you want to exercise the spirit, you have all divine authority to do it. And everybody is safe. Everybody is safe. And the one that's possessed gets safe real quick. And you tell that spirit to go into the atmosphere. I go into uninhabited places. I go into the void of space. And you have, you have rid the community of such a spirit. And if they will live under the blood of Jesus Christ, they are absolutely free to live in victory. May I bless you, please. I want to say thank you, Lord, because you've been so good to us. I want to say thank you that you have led us by your great hand of power. I want to say, Lord, that you are giving us the ammunition and, and you're giving us the desire that we're going to set millions free.